Let's read together with one voice, everyone. Begin. The day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the, uh, the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, and just as he was in the boat, there was also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the wave broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still or have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Amen. Yes, it seems spring is here. Uh, and I hope uh, the warm spring comes to our life as the spring comes. And I heard uh, this week uh, there will be a peak on a cherry blossom in Washington, D.C. And uh, I hope you have time to enjoy when you go out. But don't go out as a group. And this is not a vacation. This is not a break. And that I, I watched the news and so many college uh, youngsters, they went out to uh, the beach in Florida and they, uh, they had a party. And it's not a vacation time. It's not break time. And this is kind of, we are facing national crisis, world crisis. So we have to be really careful. But as you're staying home, it's, it must be so hard. It's sometimes uh, we are so depressed and we don't know what to do. We are so frustrated. Especially uh, the psychologists and people just make the world and that uh, coronavirus blue. Yes, it just gave us more depression. It frustrates us. So what I want you to do, stay with your parents, stay with your family. And if you feel really stuffy and I want you to drive and don't want, I don't want to get out, uh, get out from the car and get a fresh air. But actually, I took liberty to drove around to Washington, D.C., and I saw some cherry blossoms. So I saved some pictures for you. Here we, here we go. Uh, it's not totally bloomed yet, but it's going to start from today, a uh, whole throughout week, and cherry blossom will be bloomed completely. Um, it's beautiful scenery, and, uh, but not like uh, ordinary years and past years. My heart is broken. and. It was not joyful anymore. It was not excited anymore. Um, because we, we human, whole world is facing the crisis of coronavirus. Yes, I'm a pastor, but I'm also human. And I have frustration as well. But I just want us to overcome this fear and this uh, crisis. And here, uh, this is the one uh, very uh, special scenery of this year, Yolikan City this year. Uh, the first man uh, wearing mask and he's just watching these cherry blossoms. It's kind of very uh, odd and it's kind of weird, but I can identify with him what he's going through and what whole world is going through. Actually, this is the flowers from around the church area. A beautiful, beautiful flowers blooming. And yeah, actually, as I was looking at the flower, and I, I feel a little comforted. And so I wanted to share with this beautiful flower news with you guys. And also, this is the, uh, that uh, I really like a spring. And this is the flower in a, a church located. And as I kind of drove around, and I see that the uh, street is empty, and the restaurant is empty, and there's nothing. There's all quietness. So. I'm sure it's not me alone going through that, uh, the feelings, but I do believe that we all can overcome this crisis. You know, every uh, year about this time, we always hear the March Madness. As you all know, the March Madness is for the uh, college basketball uh, the tournament. The final 68 college teams play for the championship during this month. That's what we call that a uh, March Madness, and I can I sense that the young people's uh, that spirit and young people's that energy, but there's no uh, NCAA anymore because of no one could suspect or predict of 2020 March Madness, the coronavirus. I believe that the madness of the coronavirus that 
we are experiencing now eventually will pass. So I want us to have hope and I want us to help each other. I want us to cooperate with what our government is uh, telling us and we have to help each other. We have trust in what our leaders are doing. Now, <clears throat> as I mentioned, there's no NCAA uh, game and MLB, major uh, bas uh, baseball, or major, uh, nation, uh, the, the NBA or PGA. There's no travel. Whole world is locked down. I feel like it made, uh, made me think that the clock is stopped. It's kind of very weird feeling I never experienced in my life. I am sure many of us feel the same way and the clock is stopped, the, the earth is stopped, but still we are alive. Still time is keep going. And I want us to face the reality and just like this flower, as I mentioned, I want us to overcome this adversity together. Uh, as the bud of flower that overcome the wintry wind are blooming, only those bud who overcome the wintry wind are blooming. Yes, we are the one who have to overcome this crisis and together as we pray, as we help each other. But as I faced it, as we faced this crisis of corona, uh, coronavirus, and I was thinking, when, what do we do? What do we do? What should we do if there is a strong wind in our life? Should we just be anxious and worried? You know, our problem, our crisis is not only coronavirus. There will be a much bigger uh, coronavirus. There will be a much bigger storms than any wind, uh, wind storms. So what should we do? This is what our uh, questions. If we face any kind of a crisis of our life, if we face any kind of a hurricane of our life, what should we do? I want us to take a look at the scripture verse so we can just find, we, we, we should be wise to find the answer, what we should do. Sometimes we think, so, there is a way we can get rid of the uh, craziness of our lives. But let me tell you, there's, there's nothing but a delusion. There's no way we can get rid of our, uh, the storms in our life. We are human beings. Because every human being go through the furious storm once or twice, sometimes numerous times. So it is impossible to get rid of the furious storm as we are sailing the sea of life. That's why today's scripture verse is very important. It is wise not to devise how to avoid the fringes, but to figure out how to deal with it when the windstorm blows. That's the wise man. So I want to take a look at, I want to invite you to today's scripture verse and what should we do now we are in the middle of this crisis. This is one we have to find it. That's what victorious life looks like how we will overcome when the storm of the uh, uh, storm of the life comes is the answer we need to find we should be alive let's fight and win any situation let's challenge without giving up we can do it i do believe we can do it i do believe god is with us and god will listen to our prayers and we will win over this crisis e and so today's scripture verse, as you all know, uh, is a real family with the scripture verse. And Jesus and his disciples are sailing the Sea of Galilee. In the Galilee, it is like a really big lake, but it looks like a real uh, big ocean. That's why it, they call it as a, uh, as a Galilee of Sea. And it is located uh, in about 95 kilometers of north of Jerusalem. Uh, that is the Sea of Galilee. It's about 21 kilometers from north to south, and then 13 kilometers uh, from uh, east to west. Uh, besides, there are rough waves. It's just fresh water, but it is just like sea. That's why it is often called sea. And the Sea of Galilee has an un unusual topography. The water surface is more than 200 meters lower than the Mediterranean Sea and is surrounded by mountains all around. During the day, 
when the water uh, evaporates in the hot sun, the temperature of the water surface rises and the air becomes thin. Then at night, the air above the mountain cools down and there's still a difference in water temperature, air pressure, and atmospheric pressure. So at this time, the cold air above the mountain hits the water uh, through the cannon and creating a blast. This gust is very capricious and irregular. That's why ships calling, uh, sailing through the Sea of Galilee have trouble. Just like what today uh, scripture says, it is just like our life. Wouldn't it be nice if we know what will happen in advance? But however, we don't know anything about what will happen in our life. We don't know anything about what will happen in our future. Sometimes the rage of suffering and trials comes uh, and goes like an uninvited audience, uninvited guest. Sometimes very large wind, megaton-like winds are coming. It is hardships and trials that are difficult to handle, just like coronavirus and what the world is facing. I cannot tell you confidently I can handle many uh, crises. I cannot. I'm only human. But I have strong faith in God. And I, am, I believe God will take me whatever the place the best for me. So I overcome any hardship and any trials. But whenever we face this, this kind of crisis, whenever we, find, uh, we face any suffering and pain, we always the panic each time. And our life is crushed and we are fully affirmed in anxieties and unstabilities and worries. This is our life. You, know, you are not the only one going through this uh, frustration. You're not, you're not the only one going through this fear. So we all go through fear because we are human. It's very natural. It is okay to feel the fear, but we have to prepare if there is any storm coming. So now, as we have this crisis, don't be afraid. Now we have to prepare. Maybe there will be another bigger one, and there will be another suffering, and there will be another trials. So this is what today's scripture was teaching us here. We have to know there will be the possible storm in our life. Let's read verse 36 and 37, everyone. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat, there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the wave broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. You know, Jesus was riding that boat. Is it normal that there should be no waves, at least, on the ship that Jesus rode? In the same way, isn't it so weird if we Christians and we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior, still we're going through a tough time, we're going through a hardship? But let me tell you, that's misunderstanding. That's wrong. You know, God didn't tell us there will be no suffering. God didn't tell us there will be no pain, no hardship. Even Jesus took uh, God in you, our iniquities and Jesus took our transgression. He died on the cross. God didn't tell us there will be no suffering. There's no pain. But still, God is guiding us, lead us to overcome that hardship, that difficulties. So now to even disciples, Jesus was riding boat, and they thinking, okay, she shouldn't be a, there is no, shouldn't be a, there is no storm. Just like uh, the other day, I told my mom, and my mom is high risk uh, of people uh, to infected by corona, coronavirus. So I told her, don't come out and stay home. And whenever you come out from your place, and I want you to wear a mask, uh, tightly and also wash your hand frequently. You know what my mom said? She said, oh, don't worry. I won't be infected because my God protects me. Really? You know, yes, I do believe that God protects us. God guides us the best way. But also God gives us wisdom to what to do, how to protect ourselves. God provides doctor. God provides medicine. God provides all the great skill and technologies. Some people, they are abusing their faith. And then some people have the wrong concept of faith. That's why they are in despair. And they are discouraged whenever they face crisis, whenever they face suffering and pain. 
So some people say, if we believe in Jesus and become children of God, shouldn't we have trouble? Yes, that's total misunderstanding. Christianity does not exempt any suffering. You know how many missionaries they modeled. They just were killed as they're sharing gospel, as they're, as they're telling about God, about salvation, because they believe in Jesus Christ. So God did not say there is no suffering for Christians. We go through same hardship, same difficulties as non-believers. But we have a different way to face, to different ways to deal with the problems and hardships. We have Jesus. We overcome. We never lose our hope. We never lose our faith in God. And we are hoping for salvation. We are hoping for everlasting life. And that's why we never, never, never lose our faith. God never abandoned us. As I mentioned to you, because of this uh, misconception, Christians are prone to discouragement if they are going through any suffering and trial of, he, of, of the, uh, the furious wind. I want you to remember, Christians will suffer. Sometimes this kind of disease, sometimes family matters, sometimes because of people, uh, because of the faith, the Christians go through suffering and hardship trial. Sometimes we get tribulation and persecution. So it is better say, yes, sometimes we Christian are is ready to face the suffering. We are ready to face hardship. It is better to deal with our crisis, our hardships. And second, we have to examine our faith when the storm blows to our life. Let's read verse 38. Jesus was in the stone, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? I want you to take a look at very carefully today's scripture verse. It is said Jesus was sleeping. Was he really sleeping? Could you sleep in this circumstance? No, I don't think so. No one can sleep in that uh, the enormous and the furious storm. But I want to take a look at very carefully here. These disciples, as they faced the storm, they were stunned. They don't know what to do. They are panic. And same as we are, we don't have a choice. We but to panic when there's difficult blast. And we don't know what to do. We panic. We panic. That's what our human nature. I'm sure you heard enough as you go to grocery store, any, any, any store, and there's no toilet paper. You, you can see that whole, uh, the grocery store is just robbed by the mobs. I, I don't know what's, got, what's the relationship with the, with the coronavirus and toilet paper, but it is kind of people, they're hoarding, and they swapped, uh, swapped of the, this grocery store because of their panic. Sometimes we often say, why is this happening to me? God, where are you? Are you sleeping, God? We're just going to blame God. We complain to God. God, where are you? As if God is abandoning us. As if God is not doing anything for us. But let me tell you, we, haven't, we don't know who we were, and we don't know what God has done for us. We forgot who we were and who we are. God is still with us. God is still riding the boat with the disciples. Yes, God is traveling. God is sailing with us right now. And I was thinking about this flower. If the weather is warm, there are flower buds that bloom all year, even before the spring comes. You know, sometimes that early the, uh, the, the flower bud came out earlier before the real spring comes, and there's always kind of a uh, sudden coldness. And we just, in Korean, we express that that coldness is like uh, 
the winter jealous of the flower. So we say the coldness of jealous, fl uh, jealous flower. So this uh, small and tiny flower bud, as they just kind of face the wintry cold storms, and they cannot even bloom and they die. You know, sometimes the buds bloom before spring comes, die without blooming flowers. Maybe this is what we are. We just don't know what's going on, and we just make that things happen, and we just don't know what to do. Of course, coronavirus is not our fault. Sometimes it happened, we just make the mistake. Sometimes it just happened around us, and we forgot about who God is. We forgot about God's uh, the presence. We just forget about, and we don't even ask God's help. Let me tell you, don't complain. Do not blame God. Do not blame others. If the furious wind blows, check it out yourself. Check your faith. And check your faith. Where is your faith at? And decide what to do from now on. That's what we have to do. How can we just kind of stop the, this crazy uh, storms? How can we just block this coronavirus storms? How can I get through this furious wind with my own power? We struggle. We make an effort. We can't. We can't take care of our family. We can't take care of our children. We can't take care of the illness and sickness. We can't take care of the disaster. We can't. But don't panic. As Jesus was sailing with disciples, and Jesus is with us now. You know, as I said, there's no word despair in Christian dictionary. Don't be discouraged. Don't be disappointed. And Jesus will help us. Jesus will guide us. Be sure to remember this. And don't panic. Don't despair. And keep your mind and hopes no matter what kind of wind comes. This is what we are. We have hope for heaven. Okay, we've been, we've been talking about heaven and everlasting life all the time. But sometimes, okay, if anything happens, oh I'm, oh, I'm about to die. We just get frantic and we're just scared and we are frightened. You know, if the heaven is really nice, why do we have to be frightened? Whatever you just go through in tough time and hard time and uh, tribulation, I want to be brave. I want to be embrace the pain. Then just ask God, God, Give me strength and give me a power so I can face it. So it's time to wake up Jesus. This is what number three. We have to awaken Jesus as we realize our limit. Whenever we just face some uh, issues, some troubles, and we always try to resolve our own way. We try to apply our knowledge, our experience, and we try to use our people. And then people try everything many different ways. And we finally give up, oh no, it's time to pray. That's not right. Okay, let's read verse 39 40, everyone. Uh, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and I was completely, it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Let me ask you a question. Do you have faith in God? If you have faith in God, Wake up, Jesus. Wake Jesus up. Pray to God. It's God's help. This is what we have to do. Let me tell you once again. God is with us now as Jesus was with disciples. God is looking at us right now. Just as Jesus was going through a furious storm with his disciples. I want you to know that. You are not alone. God did not abandon us. God is with us. God is to watch over us. Don't be afraid. It's time to wake up. It's time to pray. It's time to ask God's help. Don't say, where are you, God? No, God is watching over us. God is with us right now. Many people, even the adults, doesn't matter what age we are, we open believe the problem can be resolved with money and power and fame. But people will realize that money and Money, the fame, and power cannot do anything. Sometimes people deceive God. 
they think they can deceive God. But when they face the reality and when they face the crisis, the last thing they're seeking for is God. Now, what I want us to do, we have to seek for God's help. We have to seek for God's righteousness, righteousness first. This is what we have to do it. As we call ourselves Christian, have we prayed for our countries? Have we prayed for the nations? Have we prayed for our people? As we, as we call ourselves Christian, have we re repented the sins for other people made? Have we cried out to God for other people's sins, wrongdoing, and transgressions? Jesus took our iniquities. Jesus took our transgressions. And he died on the cross. And he saved us. He gave us eternal life. But what are we doing? Have we prayed for anyone else? Have we prayed for the Korea? Have we prayed for the world? Have we prayed for our leaders? You know, what I sense that, I mean, what I know, this is our human nature. We pray when we reach rock bottom. If you don't reach rock bottom of our life, we never come to God closer. It's the time. It's the time I want us to get up. It's the time I want us to pray. It's the time I want us to wake up. It's the time we have to rise. We have to wake Jesus up. We have to ask God's mercy. Our God is power. Our God is the almighty powerful God. He knows everything about us. He's capable for everything. He's able. He's able. I'm not sure. Maybe disciples may cry out in resentment. But it is true. Jesus helped. Jesus answered to their cry out. It is true. Jesus will answer to any kind of prayers. When you pray with a whispering, when you pray as you cry out, when you, as you, when you pray as you shout out, however and whatever you ask God, God will listen. God will listen to our prayers. I, don't, I, I know that and I do believe that God will listen to our, my prayer. God will listen to your prayers. God will listen to anyone's prayer. That's why it's the time we have to pray. It's time to, we have to wake up Jesus. Now, there's huge wind blowing the, right now. Isn't it time to cry out to God? Is this the time we have to cry out to God? When are you going to cry out? When are you going to pray to God? It is the time whole world is facing the crisis. We need a person to pray to God. We need a person to pray for the countries. We need a person to pray for the people. It's the time to wake up. It's time to wake up Jesus. Let me just finish today's sermon as I wrap up, as I introduce one book. The book's name as title is Praying Hide written by Bessel Miller. It's about the missionary. So John Hyde was a missionary to India. And he was a very, uh, he refused for the, to become a pro professor. But he, in October 1892, he boarded boat to India. And for the next 20 years, he continued his ministry in India. Indians called him as the person who does not sleep because he always prayed in day and night. Hyde has been trying to save souls by uh, traversing remote Indian villages throughout his life. His life was a model of sacrifice, compassion, love for the lost soul, deep spirituality, and intercession. The last word he said when he passed away, say the victory of Jesus Christ. Say the victory of Jesus Christ. Can we shout out to the whole world, say the victory of Jesus Christ. Yes, it is perfect timing. 
we can reach out to the lost soul. It's the perfect timing we can tell them about God's plan. God sent us Jesus Christ to save this world, to save you and me. It is perfect timing to share the gospel with one another. Don't be frightened. Don't be afraid. Now it's time to get up. Let us not longer panic, no longer live in our own knowledges, and it's a time to wake Jesus. Let's hang on to Jesus. Now we need someone to awaken Jesus. That could be you. Think about it. Imagine the whole world is up to my prayers, your prayers. Your prayers can save this world. Your prayers can save thousands, thousands, millions of people. Don't be defeated by the March madness of coronavirus. Don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. It's time to re-examine myself, to re-examine my faith. It's time to wake Jesus up. I know it's crazy, but it is God-given opportunities. We can re-examine ourselves as a Christian, as a human being. I am sure this will also pass. I'm sure as winter goes, as spring comes, and this will pass, we'll have another great time. Even though we cannot come to church today, wherever you worship, wherever you just pray, I'm sure God is with you and me, and God will listen our prayers. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, your mercy, your love. Even though we experience all the blessings, all the forgiveness you gave to us through Jesus Christ, the whole world, the entire world forgot the gratefulness, the thankfulness you gave to us. People chose their own way how to live, not your way, Father. But as we look at them, as you look at the world, and we just became an onlook, onlooker, we didn't do anything. Now I realize that I didn't pray for them. I didn't even repent their sin as my sins. I didn't pray for the people. I didn't pray for the leaders. I didn't pray for the countries. I didn't pray for the nations. Lord, Forgive my sins, didn't pray for them. Forgive my sins, didn't pray, didn't repent for their sins. My eyes was closed, my ears was blocked, my mouth was, my lips were sealed, my heart was cold. There was no more cries, there were no more tears. Father, here I am now. I am surrendering you as our Lord, Father. Listen to our cry out. Mercy on us, Father. Save our, our people. Save our nations, Lord. We need your mercy, Father. Father, we cannot do anything without you. As we go through this crisis, let the whole world, let we believers awake from our sleep so we can still reality once again, straightly. So we can come to you one step closer. So we can prepare your second coming. Lord, we surrender you as our Lord. Let us not go our own way anymore. We humbly knee down before you. You lead us, you guide us your way. Father, even this crisis, we do believe that you will give us strength so we can face it and we can overcome it. Let us humbly, humbly accept. Let us humbly embrace the crisis. We can re-examine ourselves. 
so we can come to one step closer to you. Father, there are many people that are scared and afraid of this crisis. Father, you mercy on them. You comfort them. You reach out to them. You just embrace and you accept them as your children. We believe that you are with us. We thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.